Thanks for taking the time to view the third video on the BPA and Thermal Paper Project. It's brought to you by the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency in conjunction with a grant from the Environmental Protection Agency. The first video covered what bisphenol A, or BPA, is and described its use and presence in thermal receipt paper. Based on currently available hazard data, the EPA has not concluded that there are any less hazardous chemical alternatives for inkless printing processes that provide cost-effective solutions for paper receipts. Similar to BPA, the most common alternative in thermal paper is bisphenol S, which current research suggests will also have negative human health and environmental impacts. The second video provided reviews, contacts, and resources developed to help businesses move to BPA-free digital point-of-sale products. All products and resources are available online at the MPCA's website as part of the online toolkit. This final video, Best Practices for BPA Exposure Reduction, will walk you through suggestions for receipt handling behavioral changes and business POS operation options that could reduce the amount of thermal receipt paper used and the potential for human exposure or environmental release. For businesses, find out the capabilities of your current POS system. Paperless POS options are the best strategy for eliminating BPA exposure from thermal paper. Another option is to stop issuing receipts for low transaction amounts, such as under $25 or $50 where possible. Don't automatically print receipts. Ask customers, Are you interested in a receipt today? Would you like a copy of your receipt? You want a receipt? We always ask the customer, would you like to have a receipt? For employees, minimize handling as much as possible. Don't crumple receipts. Just use two fingers to grip receipts and minimize grip pressure. Reduce the amount of friction or wipe actions of fingers on paper. Ask employers if paper is printable on just one side. If it is, fold the printed side against itself before handing to customers. Also, cashiers can wear food-grade silicone fingertips on their index fingers and thumbs when tearing receipts to avoid contact. For customers, ask for and choose digital receipts or no receipts if possible. Store receipts separately in your purse or wallet and don't give kids receipts to hold or play with. And for anyone handling thermal receipt paper, wash your hands thoroughly after touching receipts, especially before preparing or eating food. Avoid using alcohol-based hand cleaners or lotions immediately before and after handling receipts because they can increase the skin's absorption of BPA or BPS. Also, avoid handling receipts when fingers are wet or greasy. For high-risk populations, such as women that are pregnant or nursing, you should avoid excessive BPA exposure. Employees should discuss feasible means of minimizing exposures with their employees, including alternate job functions for those who are temporarily susceptible. Also, have a designated checkout line for any customer not needing paper or who is able to take advantage of store services that email or archive paperless purchase records. All of these methods should be implemented with a special eye toward protecting at-risk populations, including pregnant and nursing women, infants, toddlers, and young children. If you have existing receipts and are curious if these are thermal paper with chemical developers, an easy way to check the paper is by rubbing it with a coin. Thermal paper clearly discolors with the friction. Conventional bond paper printed with ink does not. So how can you stay involved? We've asked businesses participating in this pioneering study to commit to sharing their experience, and their paper reduction results will be published along with a review of how well the paperless system works. We look forward to helping other businesses reduce their contribution to human and environmental exposure to BPA and BPS, as well as present options for viable digital receipts. Thank you for your attention, and please find more information on the project and research outcomes at the MPCA's BPA website.